Today, we're actually going to be learning about the Greek gift sacrifice. We're going to see three examples of how the Greek sacrifice, how the Greek gift sacrifice was used in different games. And let's go ahead and see it. So the idea is, well, black just castles into this attack and then we push E5. Now, the best move is G4 and continue like this. But then in the game, they play Knight D5 and then Bishop captures G7. A Greek gift sacrifice comes from you know that time where the greeks gave a very nice gift but it ended up being a, a bad surprise king captures h7 um we're gonna play the same move no matter what if they play king h8 or king here and with the same other move here so don't worry about it like let's say here knight g5 this is if they play that and they play g6 here then just queen f3 queen here and we're just absolutely winning um we can even play queen h4 i'm right, sorry queen g4 to play you know something like this um and also the idea is on queen g4 if king g7 knight captures on f7 um can prove to be very troublesome after the ideas of this this only one move and then give me the queen you have to lose a lot of material if you don't want to give away your queen and it's too much material so here bishop captures d8 or captures d8 and then queen of seven and the queen's all up in your house and yeah something like bishop e4 should should suffice maybe c4 and stuff like that um okay well let's see what happens when they don't do that right when they play that and instead of here let's play takes and so the idea on takes is that we're going to play knight g5 check and so they have two options right they can either go back and retreat or they can come forward right and the two main moves are going to be here and here right because you don't want to give this queen a check if you play here and if you play here then you're just walking into other things discovery checks like that right so these two squares are basically off limits so you have basically two squares so on king g8 let's say um he played king g6 but on king g8 this actually leads to a mate and the idea is queen h5, rook e8, queen captures f7, and just remember the pattern, okay? King h8, queen h5, check. King g8, check. King f8, and mate, right? He has nowhere to go, and the queen is checking them. So taking all the squares. Right, so that is check and mate. Right, and so let's go back. Okay, so what so what happens if king g6? So here we have to play a very elegant move. And h4 is a very powerful push and the push that we need to understand. Now, you can play queen g4 in some cases in the Greek gift sacrifice, but not in this case. You must play h4. And it's a very, very powerful pawn push saying, hey, look, my knight's defended, and I might have some ideas of playing like this because, as you can see, the king is really running low squares. Once the king hits this square, then we always have this um, check bailing us out if we don't have mate. Right, so in the game, um, they play queen e7, which is probably the best move. h5. King h6, knight captures e6, king h7, queen d3. Basically forcing the king back into its box. And of course, I mean, there are other moves here, but like maybe even knight g5 is good here. But I, I like queen d3 myself. After queen d3, king g8. And then a very... uh. Very natural move to finish everything off, um, knight g5, and to prevent it, you have to give away a lot of stuff, and also the knight tanking, right? So if we play here, then th the knight falls, and we just have a, a way better position where we have a lot of initiative, right? So if, like something like this takes takes, we have one, two, three. Four, or five pawns they have three pawns they have the bishop pair yes but their king is very very weak and it's very susceptible to attacks okay
And so let's look at, at another position. And so it's a lot of these uh, tactics are about pattern recognition. Like, hey, do you recognize this pattern? Um, and it's just about drilling it. So we're going to go into a very similar position. Okay. And so the king is already castled in this position. Okay, here, here, here. It's a lot about pattern recognition. And so the knight's here. And here again, it is a black to move. They have already castled. And this actually happened in a game. This is um, in 1942, actually. So this is a, quite a while ago. Black to move here. And they played a bishop b7. Thinking, okay, they don't really have a great get sacrifice if they could play e5, you know, then I might have this kind of stuff. But that kind of stuff actually fails because of this. So you got to be careful. You have to be careful. Um, so bishop b7, that's what they played. And so it's a very simple developing move. And black fails to see the danger. Now here, um, the opponent didn't play here, which is probably the best move. And said, oh, well, I don't see any danger. You know, there's no threat. And if you don't know these kind of sacrifices, then you're going to fall prey to some of these um, ideas very easily. So they played here. And so the same idea happens where it takes. Knight g5, king g6. And again, king g8, we saw that before. And the most direct move is to play queen d3. Although h4 can be played here as well. h4. And then we're still going to play the check on the diagonal. Excuse me. Okay. And so here the, in the game, queen d3. f5. And f5 is very weakening. And then e captures f6. Obviously en passant. King captures f6. And now the king has survived here very, very long. But he's not going to survive for longer. Rookie one, threatening mate. And then he probably is going to play like knight e5 or something to block the mate. Um, or maybe even e5, right? But e5 doesn't stop the mate with because of knight d5. Bishop captures d5, queen captures d5. And now we have a very, very strong attack. Queen b6, very strong move, stopping a lot of the threats. But then after... Knight e4 check, king g6. Knight captures c5. Um, this is pretty much game over after queen captures c5. Queen e4 check, very strong move. Rook f5. And then bishop to e3. Queen c6 again, trying to trade off queens. If they can trade off queens, then they're golden. And white must play precisely here to win. If white does not play the best move every single time, then they are close to even, but black has an advantage. Or you're extremely winning. So if you play precisely, you can be extremely winning. Queen g4 check. Has to be played. So they have a lot of choices. Black has many, many choices. So let's play king f6. And it looks like black has managed to escape. But after rook ac1. Queen e6. And now a very powerful move. Queen e4 take, attacking the rook. And saying, you know what? After queen e4, he's like, you can have the rook. You can even take here. But after here, takes rook a7. Right? The idea is that if... If the bishop takes, I mean, bishop can take, it doesn't really matter, but then they can play knight c6, right? Right now, I'm blocking the rook from moving, so 
rook a7. And this game was pretty much over after the move g4. Doesn't really matter where the rook moves. Rook f4, let's say. Bishop captures. You know, it, it, it's game over. Doesn't matter what you play. Um, right, we're up a piece and it's golden, right? We at first sacrificed a piece, but now we're up a piece with a huge attack. And all that because he missed one idea. The bishop captures f3 idea. All right, and so let's go into the next one. And again, this is going to seem very familiar, but I hope that you can get these kind of ideas into your games and win very effectively and very easily. That is the goal for this lesson, at least, to have you just win very easily. So let's go ahead into another uh, position. I'll set this one up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you should subscribe. It's one of the best things to do, honestly. You might, I'll tell Fide to give you a few hundred points extra. You know, for me to you. Bam, bam, bam. This knight's not here. This rook's not here. In this position here, this bishop's not here either. So, three? You have three pieces? Okay. I think I'm not missing anything. And it should be white to move, right? All right, and so the, the idea is very simple. Obviously, white's winning. And we've seen this many times, so you probably already know the answer. So yes, e5. Knight d5, bishop captures h7. Captures h7, knight g5. And here, king g8 is actually the right move to play. Uh, because if king g6, then queen e4 check. Well, let's go over the idea. It, king g6, queen e4, f, f5 captures here. Let's say king captures. Queen captures e6 mate, right? If... Uh, if king here, then we have queen e4. I'm gonna play here very soon. Um, let's say they play a move like f5. Queen h4, king g6, queen h7 is actually a mate because the pawn holds here and here. Alright, so let's say they play something like this, preventing it. Knight captures e6 check. I mean, you have to stop this, but let's say you don't. Let's say you play here. They made in one knight. Actually, knight captures g7 mate. Right, so you cannot play king g6 in this kind of scenario. Um, you cannot play king h6. So the only move, and obviously you can't play king h8 because of the check and then check mate. Right, so king h8, check, check mate. Right, and so yeah, so let's go over it. So the only move is to play king g8, and now queen h5. Now we have a very, very nice idea, and this is one that you should recognize. Okay, so knight f6. This is a beautiful resource because the idea is that we pin the queen at the end of everything. So e captures f6, and queen f5. Stopping everything. And black manages to defend the h7 square. Right, so let's say g4, queen g6, queen captures g6, captures f7. The fireworks have basically fizzled out here. And in, th in that position, even though it looked really good and really promising for white, the Greek gift didn't work. 
So always make sure that your Greek gift sacrifice will work. Otherwise, it's not worth going for. You know, and all it takes is just to evaluate if Bishop captures h7, knight g5, can they play can can they play king g6? Can they play king g8? If they can, then see if you can mate them. If you can't find a mate or a better position out of it, then maybe it's not better to maybe it's not good to go for it. But if you can evaluate the end position, then you're good to go. And this is a very, very powerful middle game technique that will improve your chess just by knowing it and uh, being aware of it. So thank you again and just give the video a like down there and uh, subscribe. Bye. <laughs>